Over the course of his career, Dwayne Johnson has fought the forces of Cobra, the world's biggest earthquake, a giant wolf, a giant alligator, and a regular-sized Jason Statham. But in Skyscraper, he may have finally met his match, a giant building full of bad guys. Sure, he'll make it look easy, but will he really be able to compete with the memory of Die Hard? In Skyscraper, Dwayne Johnson plays Will Sawyer, a disabled former FBI hostage team leader who finds himself in the world's largest building, a Hong Kong skyscraper called The Pearl, along with his wife Sarah, played by Nev Campbell, and their two kids. But when bad guys take over The Pearl and set it ablaze with his family trapped inside, Will must use every tool at his disposal, which most of the time is only duct tape, to scale this laughably enormous monstrosity of a building and save the day. As an action movie, Skyscraper is deliciously ludicrous, complete with action sequences that defy both logic and physics. Johnson somehow climbs a 90-story crane in about 10 minutes, and he's still got plenty of energy left over to make perilous jumps and hold bridges together with the sheer unbridled power of his massive pecs. Dwayne Johnson is a big, strong guy, but Skyscraper really pushes it. And yet, that's not a bug, that's a feature. Like the later Fast and Furious movies, Skyscraper takes place in a parallel reality where we accept literally anything that happens so long as we like the characters and the crazy stunts they're subjected to. And sure enough, we do like the Sawyer family. Dwayne Johnson shows his vulnerable side, Nev Campbell unleashes her badass side, and even the kids aren't particularly annoying. Though one of them suffers from situational asthma, which only seems to flare up when it's convenient to the plot. To put it another way, you are expected to turn your brain off when you're watching Skyscraper. This is stupid. Very little about this movie makes sense, and even its overarching story about a billionaire's hubris, which leads to mayhem and tragedy, somehow manages not to take a strong stance against that same hubris. Skyscraper goes extremely far out of its way to not have a meaningful point, and although we can criticize its blissful ignorance, you also kind of have to respect the effort. Of course, Die Hard managed to tell a similar story with nuanced characters, intricate plotting, a small degree of plausibility, and some well-illustrated themes. But although they may look similar, Skyscraper isn't Die Hard. It's not even the towering inferno. It's a simple-minded but wildly entertaining blockbuster with obvious influences and its own silly personality. It may not reach new heights of cinematic brilliance, but when it comes to lowbrow matinee thrills, it's the tops. Living up to the legacy of Die Hard is a tall order, and Skyscraper never reaches those heights. But it's a gigantic and silly blockbuster matinee of a movie with likable performances, absurd action sequences, and a heck of a lot of duct tape. Thanks for watching. For more reviews, check out what we thought of Ant-Man and the Wasp and Incredibles 2. And as always, be sure to follow and subscribe to IGN everywhere you like to watch.